Welcome to the ORCA. New polling released by the Insurance Bureau of Canada this week shows significant support among BC residents to radically change the Insurance Corporation of BC, ICBC. That's our government-owned automobile insurance monopoly. ICBC, as you've read and heard, is bleeding money. And overtaxed drivers here in BC are clearly desperate to find new ways to save money. Chris Sims is the BC director of the Canadian Taxpayers Federation. Uh, has been a leading voice in uh, turning ICBC into a driver-owned co-op, and she's here with us in the Orca studios. Hello there. Hi. ICBC, one of your favorite topics. Oh, it is. <laughs> it makes me dress up and dance and disco. Uh, let's talk, first of all, about the new polling that's just been released here. According to this data, uh, it would appear the majority of those who were polled prefer choice and private insurance. You want an ICBC co-op. How would those two coexist? We wanted to change ICBC into a co-op so that it would be forced to compete. That's why. We understand that for some reason, some folks are attached to ICBC. They somehow think that they need it there as an umbrella. And some people do truly prefer that form of collective insurance. It actually exists in different forms. There's an example of fire insurance that was actually started here in the Fraser Valley. And it's now so popular uh, that it's actually available all across Canada to Ontario. So we know we have precedent for co-op form insurance. And so that's where we wanted to take ICBC and kind of change it over to a co-op and then, next to that, open it up to competition. And that way, it can compete with other companies that provide insurance and allow people to shop around and hopefully save money on their car insurance. Because right now, what is so fundamentally unfair is that we have the highest auto insurance rates in the whole country, and we have no choice, none. Doesn't matter if you're a great driver or an awful driver, you can't shop around here and you're forced to pay these high rates. The other thing that this polling indicates is that uh, BC drivers, they want to restrict payouts for minimum injuries, minor injuries, mm -hmm. and they're not big fans of no fault. This is where you start getting into picking, as they say, winners and losers. Mm. And that is where, again, we think competition is the best way to handle that. Because a lot of times, if you've just got one-stop shopping and it's only the government dictating it, then they're the ones that decide who's at fault. Or they're the ones, for example, with injury claims that decide how injured you really are. And if you've only got one channel to go through, people find that really limiting. And so even if they want to appeal their case, for example, based on whatever collision they've had, they can't. They only need to deal with the one grand poobah, and that is ICBC. And that's, again, not fair. So we're really heartened to see this data. And it shows, based on the flood of emails and phone calls, every single time we point this out. People have had it with ICBC, and they want at least the option of picking somebody else. Right now, though, Chris, um, this is, as you know, being called a financial mm -hmm. dumpster fire. Uh, we've been told it's going to take time and a lot of money to correct. What do we do in the meantime? In the meantime, we have a lot of smart people, actually, that work in government. Uh, we have government employees who specialize in insurance, who have specialized at ICBC all through their careers, in some cases for 20 years. And we have a lot of really smart cookies in the private sector here in British Columbia. We think it's completely possible to book off, say, a calendar year and figure out how to transform ICBC into a co-op when it doesn't cost taxpayers an arm and a leg and make it solvent as a co-op and then open it up to competition. Like there are brilliant people in the insurance banking sector and the government sector. They should be able to figure this out. But we're still harnessed with this, mm -hmm. we're told, multi-billion dollar debt. What do we do with that? Just write it off? That's a great question. And again, that's where we're asking at least for this conversation to start. Because right now we feel like we're talking to a brick wall when it comes, unfortunately, to Minister Eby. He seems earnest in the sense that he wants to change ICBC, but we don't think he's changing it in the right way. Moving the goalposts based on who is and who is not a good driver, jacking up rates for some people, and then hoping that somehow these, insur these insured drivers will be paying through the nose to put out this billion dollar dumpster fire. We don't think that's fair. So that's where we say start now, plan for a year, and figure out a way to recoup that billion dollars without forcing us to pay through the nose. And what we get a kick out of almost is that whenever we bring this up, whenever we say ICBC needs to change, we need choice, we need to be able to shop around, we should be able to bundle our insurance like other adults do in places like Alberta and Ontario and Nova Scotia and not simply be told by the government what we shall pay for our auto insurance, it's, it's really infantile and strange. 
when we bring this up, they'll say, oh, what about road safety programs? Where will we get our driver's licenses? These things exist in other provinces. They're just handled by different forms and branches of government. It's not as if folks in Alberta are driving around without driver's licenses and there's no road safety checks. It's just handled by a different department. Uh, Tori, I know it comes under the uh, auspices of the Ministry of Transportation. Sure, because it's transportation. It's how that works. Uh, a co-op, though, depends upon how many members you have. True. Uh, so for a co-op to exist, one would assume you'd have to have a substantial number of members who would contribute to that co-op. If you're bringing the private sector, is that going to happen? Is that possible? That's a great question, and we think that is the beauty of competition. If ICBC is so good at delivering such a great product, as they say they are, and they provide such an essential service, and people like this form of collective group insurance, great, compete. Apparently, they don't. Exactly. <laughs> so let's give everybody a choice. Chris, a pleasure. Thank you so much. Thank you.